Councillor at Large Mark Bentz joins us to give us an update on what is happening at the City of Thunder Bay as we navigate through COVID-19. It's James with Net News Ledger. Joining us by phone is Councillor at Large Mark Bentz. Well, Mark, welcome to Net News Ledger. Thanks, James. Pleasure to be here. It seems lately that we're almost doing a lot of the, uh, you know, interview by phone. Last night's council meeting was uh, on Zoom, which probably is, is a little bit different than, than usual. Uh, what was your take on council last night? Well, my take on council is, is um, uh, I'm finding the, the, uh, the, the meetings that happen in um, Microsoft Teams is what we use. It's a little more secure than Zoom. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a little harder um, to, to um, it, it, the meetings take a little longer, I find. Sometimes there's a lot of talking going on, um, and it's harder to chair, I think, for the chairs that are involved, because it is a long-distance meeting. But uh, by and large, we can get the work that we need to get done. Um, and right now we're still in a, in a mode where we're, we're doing stuff that is legislated and stuff related to COVID, things that are timely and um, things that have to happen. Some stuff has fallen off the, uh, the agenda uh, just due to the pandemic issues. Well, the biggest issue coming out of council last night was the decision for uh, recreation and parks, recreation, culture and parks to, yep. um, you know, a sensible decision, I believe, to, you know, curtail the activities that are creating a lot of social distancing opportunity to be bro- broken. You know, if, if all of a sudden all the outdoor swimming pools are open and everything is ready at business as usual, this thing could take off on us even and negate all of the hard work everyone in Thunder Bay and across the Northwestern Ontario has been doing with COVID-19. Yeah, well, yeah, certainly. There's, um, there's a lot of factors that came in uh, administration's recommendations and, um, yeah, of course, safety is the top priority in the recommendation. Um, other, other things that I think the public needs to understand is, is there was extremely long lead times in getting the pools ready. So if the province were to suggest on June the 10th that um, pools sh- shall be open, uh, we may not have our pools open until well into July, if not near the end of July. Um, and leaving only a four or five weeks left of use at, at incredible cost to open. So it, it would, there, would, there, of course, was a number of factors in their decision. Um, and what I got from the report is, is they are recommending not moving forward with certain things that are very time-limited uh, if we were to bring them up and then operating this summer, and also to allow them to focus on other things that can be uh, brought to bear quicker. Yes. Uh, other programs. I mean, we want to we want to offer programming, uh, but we want it to be programming that is uh, cost effective, meaning that we don't want to spend a whole lot of resources and time getting a pool open that's only going to be available for you know a, a month or so. Um, so there was a number of issues. It, I found it to be a well thought out report. No one liked what what is in in the report because it means a much different summer than we're used to. Um, and, and hopefully this is, uh, this is the last summer we're going to have to do this. I I am hopeful by next year, we have some other things in place to protect people and or a vaccine, whichever, but, uh, yeah, it's a tough report, but it's a well thought out, uh, plan by administration. Now, over, over the last weeks, you've had some concerns on how things are happening with council. What would you like to share with our viewers and readers? Well, I, I brought forward a resolution um, with regards to uh, evacuees. Uh, and some of the background information is that we, we council has, has designated uh, a municipal emergency control group. Um, and that, that is comprised mainly of general managers in the city and our emergency services chiefs. And um, to and they, they are weighing in on decisions regarding to host or not host evacuees. And they were asked by the province um, uh, if we would be uh, willing to host uh, uh, 
I guess this season, you know, with flooding and fires are, are, are common occurrences in communities to the north of us. And, and, uh, and they, they communicated that Thunder Day is an unwilling host. And, and they do so on an operational basis. Um, they, they assess the operational needs. And of course, this is entirely due to COVID and, and some of, uh, some of the things that they felt the city was, was, could be overwhelmed with, um, just on its own accord without evacuees present. Um, this was early on in the, uh, in the state of emergency. However, they did reconfirm our unwillingness, I believe, last week or so. Yes. So anyways, um, I, I just thought that uh, I looked into the matter and I said, you know, what's the process of making this decision? How does it work? Because I, I, I believe it's, it's a community decision, if possible, um, meaning if there's enough lead time to, to make such a de- determination, like there was in this situation, I, I believe. Uh, there will be emergency situations where the MECG needs to turn on a dime and, and make uh, decisions, which I fully support. But, but in cases uh, where, where council and the community can be involved in such decisions, I was looking for information as to how that could happen. That, that was supported by council, so this will be coming back to council. I, I asked for recommendations on uh, how council could play a larger role in these decisions because while they are operational decisions, they're, they're highly political decisions. And, of course, myself personally, I want Thunder Bay to always be viewed as a leader in the region and a, uh, a, a place where, where the region can turn to in times of trouble because we are uh, a major hub in the northwest. And I also want the, the province to view us in that way as well. So, you know, I, I don't know what the political ramifications of telling the province that we are an unwilling host being a city uh, our size with our resources. Um, I don't know what they are. Um, I can guess, but uh, that's, that's why I brought that forward. Uh, it was it was well received by council. There are many councillors who feel that, that this needs to be looked at closer, which, which uh, I find it. Uh, a, to be a good thing, I'm happy that that they're they're looking to perhaps taking some leadership here, um, and uh, not delegating every authority, every decision related to this to to uh, administration. Well, they, you know, the the point that got raised at some levels was that people feeling that if it were not indigenous communities in the north would that decision be different? I've had some of our readers have told me that and some of our our emails that we've received at Net News Ledger. You know, Thunder Bay has had with the, uh, you know, the OIPRD report and the Senator Sinclair report on the police that there's systemic racism. You know, we're still battling that and we battle that at the national media side. And some of these, like you say, you know, it might be a totally logical decision that, you know, a management group makes but it has political ramifications. Yeah, and, and certainly we, we, we want to ensure that, that there is no systemic racism going on here, and I'm not suggesting there is, but that is, that is certainly something that uh, I want to, to, to be sure of and to relay that, yeah, if it wasn't another community, who would we do? I don't know. I'm not suggesting that that, that it has any uh, bearing on the decision made, um, but certainly I want uh, I want Thunder Bay to be viewed as welcoming, helpful, and and a leader, and and I think that's important to uh, to our community. Um, and, and there's other there's other reasons. I mean, there's the business community is also asking about uh, this this decision because. Obviously, this, this impacts our businesses, who, who right now are hurting very badly, uh, particularly the hotel industry, as, as written uh, council. Um, there, there's all sorts of um, uh, reasons behind why council should be taking more of a leadership role here when possible. The other issue that came up uh, last night in a big way was dollars and cents and where are we at? So, you, you know, as the budget chair, what is COVID-19 doing to the city of Thunder Bay financially? Well, it, it's, 
it, there, there's a lot of disruption in our services, um, mostly recreational. And, and I mean, we're, we're still trying to serve the public and you'll see the street cleaners are out and garbage is being picked up. And, but it, it's hurting us financially. It's, it's estimated to um, cost anywhere from 10 to $15 million dollars deal with this and this is um this is work that is is being um well it's not work but there's a lot of work going on but different types of work to deal with this there's a lot of services that's been curtailed but there's a lot of costs were occurring due to uh, lost revenue opportunities and that is going to um be a significant uh driver in, in budgets to come i can I can tell the public we have a solid stabilization reserve of approximately $12 million. These funds are for one-time emergencies. So, I mean, we can draw on that. Um, there's, there's, uh, but, but for cities that, that haven't uh, prepared and had some money in the bank, so to speak, uh, this is going to really um, devastate them, I would think, in the province and feds. Are, are suggesting there will be help, but we don't know to what extent. That's that's the issue. Yesterday, the Prime Minister talked about a $2 billion fund for cities, and Toronto says, okay, good, we're in for $1.4 billion. Uh, that's a federal program. You know, if, if Toronto it needs that much, you know, what is Thunder Bay and what's Vancouver and Winnipeg and Montreal? I mean, this is going to be massively expensive. There's a report yeah. out this morning that's saying that... Uh, here in Thunder Bay, that businesses saw an approximately 90% drop in sales in March, you know, in revenues. Yeah. And that's going to be, you know, is is there anything on the docket councils looking at to help our small business communities? Is there anything that council well, can do? Uh, well, we, we're, we're engaging the uh, Community Economic Development Commission. They're going to take the lead on the economic recovery. And yeah, certainly, I think there was tourism put out some kind of staycation kind of uh, contest yesterday. I mean, our departments are trying to do that uh, to stimulate uh, things in, in, in a safe way as we reopen. Um, but, you know, the, our, the city's hands are, are somewhat tied. This is, this is more of a provincial or federal jurisdiction, um, you know, to support incomes and to provide those types of supports in these times. Um, you know, the city is, is I mean, I, I, when I look at how what the city uh, Thunder Bay is doing, we're taking, we're taking the, the provinces, the province has the lead role here. Uh, we are, we are essentially an arm of the province in many ways. We're not a legislated um, um, level of government. We, we exist at the province's pleasure. And the province is, is leading a lot of what uh, we can and can do as a corporation in terms of our services and opening. Um, now, on the business side, I mean, the, the city is um, is looking at uh, the patio programs to yes. maybe help restaurants. Um, you know, customers may feel more comfortable eating outside. So we're looking at uh, bylaws uh, that, that could be altered to, to make those ease it more easily um we've got tax deferral um programs that have um come out recently so that there is no expectation that you pay your tax at the deadline i think they've been extended a month or two those types of things are what what we're uh, doing as a municipality and it it is costing us uh, cash flow cash flow is okay but but we have to keep our eyes on that too now, as we start heading to come out of this, which we're all hoping will be, you know, reasonably safety being the pr- the parameter for the top, but as they start to come out of this, you know, there's there's been discussion on what what kind of projects can get the economy fired up again. Do you think the, uh, you know, is the city looking at the indoor turf facility or, uh, you know, renovating? buildings keeping up our infrastructure because we seem to have a it seems in thunder bay that often our infrastructure suffers and then we buy new shiny infrastructure you know we we let fort william gardens down over over the years we've let the centennial conservatory go down we let dees pool go to a point where they they wanted to close it and demolish it uh 
what should we be doing with our infrastructure overall in the city of Thunder Bay? Well, that, that, that's, a, that's a pertinent question because last night at council, we had the asset management plan come forward, which addresses the infrastructure deficit. And the report pegs it right now, and this, this is an ever-evolving number, but it's at $21.7 million annually. And what that means um, is that we are shy 20, $22 million in our budget that we pass to properly maintain um, the assets that we currently own and, and pay for the life cycle costs. So um, because we call that the infrastructure deficit or the infrastructure gap, and it is, it is by no means um, special to Thunder Bay. Uh, in fact, uh, AMO, which is the um, municipal organization in, in Ontario, they estimated at over $60 billion with a B for the province of Ontario. Now, how did we get here? Well, yeah, it, it essentially uh, comes down to it, it's more fun to, to cut ribbons at brand new shiny facilities than it is to uh, keep the ones you own. Um, properly maintained. And uh, I, I put this squarely on, on the shoulders of, of political leaders. Yes. Uh, this is something I have been fighting for, uh, for for a very long time on council, is to get our infrastructure spend up, because you know, uh, anyone that, that owns anything knows that if you let it decay, it's just going to cost more to repair, or you might have to toss it out and buy a new one. It's cheaper to take care of what you own, and we are not. So what does that mean? Well, it means we need to do a better job taking care of what we own. Uh, it's very clear why these pool closed. There was no no plan put in place to, uh, to keep it open. And the good news here is that the province has legislated that uh, cities or communities or municipalities will have an asset management in place by 2024 that will basically highlight the communities that are not preparing for the future or taking care of what they own. And that will have great implications into how they can access funds from the province. If, if you're not doing what's needed, don't don't run to the province to, to take care of your problem, I think is what they're saying. Be yeah. responsible, yeah. take care of your stuff. Now that's that's probably a message that a lot of people in the city uh, feel is is not being heard as well as it could, and so that's that's positive to hear coming out of council last night. It, well, it is positive. It's 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 sad that it had to be legislated <laughs> in some ways for me personally. Not, um, I I would have hoped that governing bodies would have been a little bit more uh, proactive. Um, one thing that really uh, gets to people, I think, uh, citizens, is, is a reactive approach to governing. Uh, very expensive, very uh, emergency, uh, crisis-based. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that this is a proactive step. Fully support it. We've got uh, we've got to find uh, 20, 20 to thirty million dollars. Or we need to retire some of our assets or lower the service standards that are on them. Um, that, that, th- those are some of the issues that are involved in this asset management plan. Excellent. And with that, Mark, I think we're going to let you get back to, to work. Uh, and we'll, we'd like to talk to you again you know, as we move through this with council meetings so that people know what's going on. Uh, and we'll be talking to other councillors as well. So I want to thank I you for coming in. I think that's a fine idea. Thank you very much. Uh, you're very much. welcome. Stay up to date, stay safe, and stay subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, join Net News Ledger on our YouTube and our Facebook pages so you know what's happening.